Hi there, this is Robin, and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. Today is day five in a, in a series called Help Me to Pray, where I take some of the verses in the Bible, and first I read them um, as a way to set um, the tone for the prayer, and then I take those verses, and then I pray them over you. You can use these in a number of ways. You can just allow um, the words to just settle on your heart and your soul. You can listen to it throughout the day whenever you just need that. Um, you, you feel that sense of wanting to pray, but you don't have the words to pray. And I know that God honors your desire to pray. My daughter and I are going through a Bible study right now, and every day, it's called Between Us by Vicki Courtney, and it's set up in a way where there are, there's a, a verse um, to read, and there's a story, kind of an anecdote, anecdote about um, how she might see it in her life as a teenage girl, and then there's questions that I ask about when I was her age. She's a teenager. She's 14. And then she a answers questions as well. And we basically go back and forth. So I answer the questions in the morning that pertain to me. And then she reads my answers at night. And then she reads and then she answers her questions. So today's um, uh, Bible study, I think, might be uh, something to really think about why we cannot seem to really sometimes sit down and pray. And of course, it's having to do with looks and training the body versus training the spirit. And her assignment is, pay attention this week to messages you hear that encourage training our bodies or training in godliness. Maybe it's an ad on TV. Maybe it's something your pastor says on Sunday morning. Whatever it is, write it down. At the end of the week, tally up the number of times you heard messages about training the body and the number of times you heard about training in godliness. What type of message did you hear more? Now, you know that we don't even need to see her list at the end of the week. You know that we are inundated with this urgency about constantly training our bodies. Every little morsel that goes into our mouths, every little uh, um, wrinkle has to be erased from our faces. It's just inundated. Just think about the number of messages that we hear having to do with that. And then how little we are encouraged to be training in being able to sit and listen to God and hear from God. And then something like what we're going through in 2020, a pandemic. Well, all that training, it's really showing, isn't it? And so I am more committed than ever to the practice of prayer. Because when it's all said and done, we have no control, folks. We do not know what is coming. But we know the one who's in control. And he is good. And he can guide. And he can keep our soul safe and at peace in the midst of whatever trouble. Deuteronomy 10, 17, 18. Lord my God, you are God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no partiality and accepts no bribes. You execute justice for the fatherless and the widow, and you love the alien, giving him food and clothing. Luke 1, 46, 47. My soul magnifies you, Lord, and my spirit rejoices in you, my Savior. For you, Almighty One, have done great things for me, and holy is your name. 
Your mercy is on those who fear you from generation to generation. Psalm 143, 8. Let me hear your unfailing love in the morning, for I have put my trust in you. Show me the way I should walk, for to you I lift up my soul. Deuteronomy 7, 9. You, Lord my God, are the faithful God who keeps your covenant and your loving kindness to a thousand generations of those who love you and keep your commands. Isaiah 63, 7. I will tell of your loving kindness, Lord, and praise your deeds according to all you have done for us in your great goodness toward the house of Israel, which you have bestowed on them according to your mercies and according to the multitude of your loving kindness. Job 19, 25-27 I know that you, my Redeemer, live, and that in the end you will stand upon the earth, and after my skin has been destroyed... Yet in my flesh I will see you, I myself will see you, and behold you with my own eyes and not another. How my heart yearns within me. Now as we go into prayer, remember it doesn't matter necessarily how your hands are folded or where you're sitting or if you're on your knees or just laying down. What matters is that your heart is turned toward God and you're listening for his voice and you're allowing the Holy Spirit to minister to you. God, you are the God of gods and the Lord of lords. You are the great God, the mighty and awesome God who shows no partiality and cannot be bribed. God, we thank you that you ensure that orphans and widows receive justice. You, God, show love to the foreigners, giving them food and clothing. Let my spirit rejoice in God, my Savior. For you, O Mighty One, are holy. And God, you have done great things for me. God, you show mercy from generation to generation to all who fear you. Thank you that your mighty arm has done tremendous things. You, Lord, scatter the proud and haughty ones. God, bring down princes from the thrones and exalt the humble. Lord, fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away with empty hands. God, you watch how people live and you see everything they do. Lord, no darkness is thick enough to hide the wicked from your eyes. God, thank you that you bring the mighty to ruin without asking anyone. And you, you set up others in their place. God, you know what the wicked do and in the night you, Lord, will overturn and destroy them. You, God, will strike them down because they are wicked, doing it openly for all to see. For they turned away from following you, God, because the wicked have no respect for any of your ways. Thank you, God, that you hear the cries of the needy. Let me hear of your unfailing love each morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk. Give me the faith to give myself to you. Rescue me from my enemies, Lord. Give give me courage to run to you, God, for you will hide me. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. For the glory of your name, O Lord, preserve my life. Because of your faithfulness, bring me out of this distress. 
In your unfailing love, silence all my enemies, for I am your servant. Give me a voice to tell of your unfailing love. I praise you, Lord, for all you have done. I rejoice in your great goodness, God, which you have granted according to your love and mercy. Help me to know that the Redeemer lives. Help me to see you, God, for myself. O oh Lord, hear me as I pray. Pay attention to my groaning. Listen to my cry for help, God the King. I pray to no one but you. Listen to my voice in the morning, Lord. Each morning let me bring my requests to you, Lord, and wait expectantly. O oh God, you take no pleasure in wickedness. You cannot tolerate the sins of the wicked. Therefore, the proud may not stand in your presence. For you, God, hate all who do evil. You, Lord, will destroy those who tell lies. You, Lord, detest murderers and deceivers. Because of your unfailing love, Lord, I can enter your house and worship at your temple with deepest awe. Lead me in the right path, O Lord, or my enemies will conquer me. Make your way plain for me to follow. My enemies cannot speak a truthful word. Their deepest desire is to destroy others. Their talk is foul like the stench from an open grave. Their tongues are filled with flattery. O oh God, declare them guilty. Let them be caught in their own traps. Drive them away because of their many sins, for they have rebelled against you. But like all who take refuge in you, God, rejoice. Let them sing joyful praises forever. Spread your protection over me, for all who love your name may be filled with joy. For you bless the godly, O Lord. You surround them with your shield of love.